So the, what we had the opportunity to do was to measure the aluminium content of the brain of individuals who died with a diagnosis of autism. So we were able to do two things. We, we were able to measure how much aluminium is in the brain of individuals who died with autism, but also we were able to look at the aluminium in the tissue using a microscopy technique called fluorescence. The amount of aluminium in the brain tissue was, I would say, extraordinarily high, very high. My group has measured the aluminium content of probably more than 100 human brains. And these brain tissues taken from the individuals with the diagnosis of autism were some of the highest we've measured at, bar none. The only ones we've seen of a similar were a recent study in familial Alzheimer's. So in this relatively young group of people, some 13, 14, 15 years of age, we saw more aluminium than we've seen in almost any other circumstance. So this in itself is a very important finding. Perhaps equally important, if not more important, were the, the microscopy studies. The microscopy studies enabled us to identify where the aluminium was in the brain tissue. When we looked at our brains from people with a diagnosis of autism, we found something completely different and something we've never seen before as yet in any other uh, set of human brains. We found that the majority of aluminium was actually inside cells, intracellular. Some of it was inside neurons, but actually the majority of it was inside non-neuronal cell populations. So we found that these cells were heavily loaded with aluminium. We also saw evidence that cells in the lymph and in the blood were passing into the brain. So they were carrying with them a cargo of aluminium from the body into the brain. This is the first time in any human brain tissue we have seen this. So this is a standout and as yet unique observation in autism. But now because I have seen the same cells from the, where, that we would see at an injection site carrying a cargo of aluminium into the brain tissue of individuals who died with autism, I would now say, I would now say that we have to think very carefully about who receives vaccine, which includes an aluminium adjuvant. You know, we need to think carefully, is this in a life-saving or not? And if it isn't, don't have, an, have it with an aluminium adjuvant. We're not necessarily talking about immediate effects either. We're talking about potential long-term effects, as we've seen with autism. This is not something that is necessarily immediate, and it is something that can happen over months, years, or even decades. So we need now to be extremely careful and cautious about when we decide to use it has an aluminium adjuvant. It worries me enormously to see these data and I was not I was not worried before we had these data. It is incredibly difficult to do this research. Mm -hmm. No government funded this research. This research came because of philanthropy. It came because of individuals who wanted to know answers and were prepared to use their own money. We pay our government and our government should really be using our money to fund this type of research.